dog. Tell me something you think I don't know. But I know that's a million things. Just pick one. Uh, <laughs> pick one. Tell me something you think I don't know, because that's a test for me. If I know it, I'll tell you, come on, doc. You know, I know that. Give me another one. If not, then I'll admit and okay. I hope my people will learn from it. So, so I'm going to pick, put on my pharmacist medical hat real quick. Perfect segue. Perfect segue, yes. doc. Thanks for that. Perfect segue <laughs> to, to, to Innovarex. Because I want to, I think it's very, very important we talk about what you've actually done. So you're somebody, on top of the receipts that I talked about, you're actually somebody that, here at STEM to Roots, uh, um, uh, what we're trying to do is, you know, have conversations with people in the diaspora, people that left the continent all over Africa, and now in the Western world, the Americas, the UK, Australia, Asia, wherever, right? And people have been having, and I've had these discussions, by now you're my 20th guest. So I've had 19 people come by and I always ask, cause I want to pick their brains on. Here in the diaspora, I've spoken to enough people to see there's this guilt of, okay, you know, every time I speak on something going on back home, especially Gambia, <laughs> uh, 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 somebody will say, oh, you're not here. You know, you can speak on it. And, and, and they're right, so I'm not gonna speak on it. Uh, every time that I want to build something and uh, expand my capacity and capability, you know, uh, I'm not able to do it from from the U.S. I have to be home, you know, because it's just it's just hard. It ends up failing, and people like different reasons, right? And and, and on and on. And people hold back. They'll focus on their, their career here because it's important that they do what they do for all the reasons that I've heard you uncover many times. They're taking care of family at home. They're taking care of themselves. You know, some even the convenience alone is enough for them to stay here. And so people have had this in their heart to do something at home, to connect at home, but they're challenged in actually figuring it out, knowing how to do it, that balance, right? And you're somebody that is self. You, you are a, a model, an, exam, a, an example for being able to do this. Today, I'm talking to you here in North Carolina. You have a business running as you're sitting here. It's running in the Gambia, a business that I can't wait for you to break down what Innovarex does and uh, what you're doing in Gambia, how you're, you're going to expand, you know, in the sub-Saharan Afri Africa and globally, you know, so, so you start there. You tell me your thought process for somebody who was trained here in the U.S., worked here in the U.S., how Gambia became even a place that you can go set up something like that. Please tell mm -hmm. me about that. Yeah, I think it begins going back to the seas, right? Capability. Um, mm -hmm. I was very fortunate. Um, I went to a top 10 pharmacy school in the world at, at mm -hmm. Purdue. Mm -hmm. And Honestly, that's where the idea of Innovarex started because even my last year of pharmacy school, one of my projects in our leadership class was building a business model similar. Mm. Because I started, I had left Gambia, didn't go back. Yes. But I started working for Walgreens um, early, yes. even when I was a student. And as soon as, as soon as I graduated, I got promoted to start managing stores months after I graduated. So I got thrown into learning the business of healthcare very early in my mm, career mm. and did it at such a very high level, both in terms of what I was managing, how many people I was managing, understanding healthcare from a very nuanced way. Mm. I reached a point where not only was I confident enough to know that, okay, this is something now that I could replicate because I always had visions of that. But Michael, I used to spend a lot of my days and nights working in rural North Carolina. Mm. You know, having amazing people that deal with poverty, uh, majority white people that maybe not be as educated. And I was doing it really, really well. But every time I was driving home, which it was an hour going, hour coming back, something in me told me, there's people that look like you. Some of them, your mother, your grandmother, who, if you leave Walgreens to try to attempt to take this home, Walgreens will not miss you. 
and they did not miss me. But one person going back to Gambia, the ripple effect is what it is today, right? So I think at some point, and it goes back to that spiritual thing I was telling you, God mm -hmm. keep telling you something. Like, this is not why I gave you the knowledge. This is not why I gave you the experience. I gave it to you early, but I'm going to test you to see if your purpose and your capacity could align. So I got to a point where wow. I started building Innovorex. So I started building the concept of Innovorex in 2013. St started, but Innovorex Gambit did not open till 2019, right? Yes. yes. So it took a while, it took a while, it took a while. But at the end of the day, I realized that, and most people that are born in Gambia, raised in Gambia, sometimes they get a little bit insecure, I think, when they hear diaspora and saying, well, Gambian diasporas could save Gambia. I don't even think it's a matter of we're better than them. I think yeah. exposure, people who are exposed have an advantage to increase how fast a lot of African nations wow. could develop. Bring it outside, outside in. Mm -hmm. Outside mm -hmm. in, because I reached a certain level of Walgreens where what was my ceiling? I was mm. going to go to corporate Walgreens or start managing more stores. I knew the ceiling, yeah. but I knew I also understood healthcare to a point where a lot of problems in Gambia's healthcare and Africa's healthcare, we already have the solutions for it. I honestly do believe that. And I'll explain wow. healthcare in a way yes. that will make you understand it. Because yes. the average African, if you say healthcare, yes, the first thing they think about is a hospital. Hospital bed. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. So we, we think about healthcare at the bottom, at the end stage of healthcare. Even mm. our governments, they like building hospitals. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Our donor organizations like yes. funding hospital supply projects, yes. hospitals. Yes. Right? yes. Yes. If you have a population where the average age is 16 years old, how many 16 year olds do you know that need a hospital bed? If you say, that. okay, what, if, what, if, what about the adult population in the Gambia? Mm -hmm. Did you know that only 2.5% of Gambians are older than 65 years old? Only 2 no way. percent And I'll give you something else. Less than 0.2% of our population are older than 80 years old. So in a nutshell, if you look at Africa's health ecosystem, we focus all our efforts in terms of at the end, when the end. by the time you need a hospital bed in Africa, in Gambia, if we're being honest, start making plans. Because even if somebody leaves the hospital, the likelihood of them living five, 10 years longer, especially if it's a chronic condition, they're not going to live long. So most families, sometimes the diaspora, they will spend so much money in what we consider end of life healthcare problems when they could have spent a fraction of that 20 years ago. Because by the time somebody has kidney failure, by the time somebody has a stroke, a heart attack, you could have captured their healthcare status 20 years earlier mm -hmm. and as well them the right medication every single day, you're delaying the progression, right? That's the Gambia and Africa dynamic, right? And if you think yes. about healthcare, one thing I understand about healthcare, and if you pay attention to healthcare, right? the moment something is wrong, Michael, and you, you seek care, you're headed towards two destinations hmm. in healthcare. You're either going to need a procedure or you're going to need a prescription. Yes. Just think about yes. your health yes. experience, yes. right? Yes, yes. Prescription or procedure. And sometimes, even if you are getting a procedure, you're going to need a prescription. Yes. That's majority of the yes. healthcare issues. Yes. Now, the issue yes. is, what type of prescription are you going to need? Is it a prescription for short-term, meaning you have an infection, infection you clear, out, yep. mm -hmm. clears it out, mm -hmm. or... Mm -hmm. I tell you, in my case, when I was 28 years old, you have hypertension. <laughs> now I know that I'm going to need a prescription every single day for the rest of my life to make sure 
I'm not dying at 56 like my grandmother did. I don't have end stage renal disease because Gambia doesn't even have 20 dialysis machines that are working at the same time at any point. At any time in Gambia, could 25 to 30 people receive dialysis, which is what happens when your kidneys shut down. Kidney so you need a blood needs to be up. Mm. So it's just understanding healthcare in a way that we now as a company said, hey, Africa is young. That's why if you look at from a, even from a capitalist standpoint, it's the healthcare retail market in Africa is so large, but mm. we need to shift the philosophy from mm. building hospitals mm. to providing preventative care and management of chronic conditions that are killing people more than malaria used to kill people, wow. right? So that's literally healthcare. And even if you look at the USA, it's prescriptions and procedures. That is healthcare most of the time. The diagnosis is part of the process. Yes. The doctor's visit, all those things make you arrive at a fork road. Do you need a procedure or you need a prescription? If you need a prescription, do you need it short term or you need it long term? That is pretty much what healthcare is designed to do, especially in Africa now. I see Gambia where now, even when I speak to diasporans, yes. all Innovarex Global did was mm. build an infrastructure that doesn't yes. involve hospital beds. Our model will never involve hospital beds because by yes. the time you need a hospital bed, we cannot help you. It's too late. I've heard you say that over and over. It, yes. will, it will never. But what it does is it allows yes. us to be lean. It allows us to serve the entire Gambia. What mm. we do really well, the company, we capture and keep. Capture as in we will capture your healthcare status where you are. Because every individual, the moment you are born, you started dying from a healthcare standpoint. 100%. What's going to kill you? No, just think about it. The moment wow. we are born, we started dying. The only difference between me and you is what factors in our life is going to speed up how early we die. But when, the moment you're it. born, you've started dying. But if you, if you have hypertension at 28 and don't care about it, you're yes. going to die earlier, statistically, right? If you are overweight, don't have the life, lifestyle practices, and mm -hmm. you find out at 30 years old that you're diabetic, but you refuse to take medicine, you refuse to treat, you're going to die early. So every human being, the moment you're born, you are dying. It's just how fast or what factors are going to contribute to yes. early death, which is why from a healthcare standpoint, the average Gambian doesn't live to be 65. So if you are a 30 year old Gambian, statistically, you've already lived half your life. And if you I'm live 30. in Gambia, just think about that. At 30 years old, Gambian men are not celebrating 65 years old at the rate, which is why it's very common from a societal standpoint. And this is yes. where I link human experience and healthcare. Yes. Most, most Gambian men will not see their kids get married. Yeah. Most Gambian men will not witness their children graduate from university. Yes. And Gambia, like Africa, has one of the highest rates of widows because yes. Gambian men die early, but marry young. So if you marry somebody who's 15 years younger and you die 20 years earlier, you have created a widow in her 40s who, if she is not educated, if she is not was wasn't the breadwinner, you've put that woman in abject poverty for an entire generation. So the cycle continues. So everything is connected. Our human experience and our healthcare experience is connected. But at the end of the day, all these factors are why Innovarus decided, okay, we are going, no matter how difficult, we're going to reshape what healthcare is and show people that there is a way to create a healthier ecosystem that is dignified. Because also, Michael, most people that take ideas to Africa 
want to do it in the most convenient way, as in we're going to go to Banjul or Comba and set up our facility. Most people. Very rare do you have a company that starts and says, I'm going to serve rural and urban Gambia. And today, that was one of the non-negotiables for my business model. We said from day one, even if somebody's mother lives in Mansa Konko, in Bansang, in Base, we want to make sure the medication for hypertension or high cholesterol that they're taking, even if Joe Biden is on cholesterol medicine, I don't know if he is or not, yeah. I want your grandmother in Base to have the same cholesterol medicine as Joe Biden. That's what the mission is really designed to do. But healthcare is something that I, I believe we understand how to fix healthcare, not doing everything, but what we do, uh, I think we've got to a point where we could do it really, really well. Doc, Doc, um, here's, here's why I'm choosing to have this conversation the way I'm having it. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many places we can go where we can shift over to where we are, why we are, where we are, uh, who can be responsible for certain facets of what the the elephant as a whole is, as far as the issue goes. I want to narrow it down to where in this one hour conversation that we are having, that people will listen to this and say, hey, practically here are solutions, direct solutions. Okay, for, for what Innovarex is presenting, if this is my condition, here's how they're able to help. If this is how I'm thinking about healthcare, here's what I'm getting from them is able to change. So that's why I'm going to just narrow this down to yeah. just direct examples of yeah. like, and I got teary eyed when you were talking about facts about, you know, uh, uh, fathers and wid widows and age and, and 30 year olds living half their life. You and I are Gambian. Mm -hmm. This is beyond a Gambian problem. My wife is from Zimbabwe. Same mm -hmm. issue. Same. Mm -hmm. You know, I have mm -hmm. my mother-in-law always talking about the same things you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is an African issue. That's why this platform is Africa. We're picking mm -hmm. Gambia as an example because you're already working directly with Gambians and I'm from there. I understand it more. Mm -hmm. Um, um, um. I actually sat down and thought about this. My neighborhood, I, I'm from Bangalondeng. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 my dad passed away at 52. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that and how that's an example because I, I want to link that to Innovarex. My dad died at 52. Mm -hmm. Exactly what you just said. My mom turned 65 last March. She's mm -hmm. right here with me the last one year. So since uh, uh, 2008, my mom has been a widow. Uh, uh, my neighbors, uh, 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 it, the, the Jajukunda and Jiba, and behind me is a Jata, Kolkunda, uh, mm -hmm. Jata Kunda right opposite, uh, mm -hmm. what's the sign? So every every Kunda that I just named doesn't have a father there. Every single one that I just named. Uh, and out of all of them, I, I actually counted up to nine, uh, the Hardin Kunda. I, I, I counted up to nine, and out of the nine, only only two households have the mom and dad gone. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. meaning seven, there are seven widows from these nine compounds that I just talked about who, you know, all the husbands gone. So this sample size is exactly what you just talked about. Mm -hmm. This is just my neighborhood. I'll talk to the next Gambian, same thing. So so my dad at 52 passed away. So let's, let's if 20 years ago, or when I got here in 2004, Mm -hmm. You know, Varex was around, mm -hmm. you know, my dad, you know, I'm not going to do the math here because you don't do math, you know, live. <laughs> yeah. But at, at, at whatever his age was in 2008, and here you are, I hear about, you know, Varex, I'm like, Whoo, what Dr. Ismail and, 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 and team are doing, I want to get my dad on this. I'm over here in the diaspora, right? Mm -hmm. What could I have done? Where would I have started? So that whatever happened with my dad, you know, which I'll break down like this. We ended up finding out here in the diaspora, I've heard you talk about these things where, you know, my dad, every time I call him, you know, oh, no, everything is okay. Mm -hmm. Everything is good. Right. Mm -hmm. Where he's not talking about, you know, he's the macho African typical man who will go to work every day. Right. 
And when I think about where he was as somebody who worked for CRS and the WFP, a, a, a UN-based company, he had health insurance, whatever that is in Gambia. He had mm -hmm. health insurance, access to doctors that the people that you service out there in Manta Conco and, and Basse don't even know what that is. So whatever mm -hmm. highest level of healthcare that is in Gambia, my dad had mm -hmm. access to. Whether he mm -hmm. used it or not, I don't know. But he was somebody that, you know, uh, by the time he was he was sick and to the point where now they're not, they could not hide it from me anymore because my cousin said, hey, when last did you talk to uncle? Because I went to visit and, you know, he's visibly sick. He's skinnier and uh, he had the jaundice, yellow skin, eyes or whatever. I call him, I'm like, dad, I... I, I now I know. Somebody just told me. Yeah. He said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's nothing. Then I start wailing and crying over the phone. He's rushing to get out because he doesn't want me crying. And then mm -hmm. that was the second to last conversation. That conversation wow. of me finding out. Where did they rush him? Typically, like you know Gambia. I don't, I know you can guess it. Where did they rush him? Flew him to Dakar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. The day of the surgery, the doctor said, because I called, the doctor said, when they found out, when they did the CT scan at RBTH, whatever they found, what whatever that mark is on, you know, you know, whatever that whatever X-ray or whatever you call it, whatever that mark is, that was the day of the surgery. Mm. So these four days it took to have a flight because it was on a it was on a Sunday and you could only fly on Thursday, whatever. Those those four days were the most valuable time of this whole thing. Too late. Yeah. 2004 when I got here, what could I have done with Innovarex today that could help somebody like that? So that's how I want to go about this conversation it's, practically. It, it's, it's very simple. Um, and every time I talk to people in the diaspora, because the problem will always end up in the hands of people in the diaspora who have right. the fun health. Right. So what I keep telling them is, allow Innovarex to capture mm. the health status of people that you love now. No. Not when they need a hospital, right? Because, Michael, I literally designed everything the company does where if you give us one hour with somebody that you love, mm. we could capture their health status where they are today. And because if you look at how I build the company, so even our comprehensive wellness screening, which I think is about $140, mm -hmm. where we do a complete assessment of where they are today. And from that moment, because we have the best cloud-based electronic health record system in West yes. Africa, I really do yes. believe that. Mm -hmm. You as the diaspora, for the first time maybe in a healthcare experience in Gambia, you know objectively where your health care of your loved one is. And going back to how I describe health care, from that result, they're on three paths. If you're lucky and they're healthy, we'll tell you every single year, repeat the physical or the comprehensive wellness screening. If they need a procedure, we'll refer them out. And oftentimes people that come too late, we refer them out for a procedure. But most people we could identify that a chronic condition is present. Mm. And almost 40% of Gambian adults that we screen have a chronic condition that could lead to early death, as in diabetes is present yes. or hypertension yes. is present or high cholesterol. Yes. Yes. So now you as a diaspora, and we could tell you based on step one, your capture moment, which is the comprehensive wellness screening. Yes. We now tell you what your loved one needs to keep them outside of the hospital and live longer. Mm. And oftentimes that may require prescription medication. So now we tell you, don't send them money every single month to your cousin to go to a local pharmacy to buy medication for high blood pressure mm -hmm. because one, up to 40 to 50% of the medications in the Senegambia or West Africa region are counterfeit. They would not pass quality control right? But also human nature, no human being oftentimes could show up to the pharmacy every 28 days to pick up their medication. Yes. Which is why if you look at our business model with Wellness on Wheels, the moment we tell you that your mom or dad or aunt has hypertension or the chronic condition, 
we build a formulary now to sell you a subscription to make sure at the end of the day, at the bare minimum, they cannot live without medication to keep this disease under control. Mm. So for example, one medication today in the Gambia for $100 a year, we will deliver a medication anywhere in the Gambia every 28 days. No. You say that you, li you live in the USA. There is not a single no. healthcare organization no. in the USA no. that would deliver medication to your house every no. 28 days no. for a hundred dollars, right? So even in Gambia sometimes, and that's where the frustration comes into play because I think people don't understand value when it comes to healthcare. And sometimes even people in the diaspora, because their parents, our, our parents feel bad for asking for stuff. Yes. So even yeah. if you tell them, oh, we need to pay $700 a year for your health care, they'll tell you, oh, Michael, that's way too much. I'm that's fine. Too much. I'm good. Don't I'm fine. Right? But I guarantee you that hospital in Dakar, even if your parent is not going to survive, you will pay the bill. Yes. So if you yes. look at end of life, yes. so many Gambian diaspora spend thousands of dollars end of life. End when they could life. have spent just a hundred, couple of a hundred dollars early and allow their parents to. So that's what I would say. Allow us to capture your loved one. And if we need to keep them by making sure they get the right medication, access to a nutritionist who understands the diet, access to a doctor, access to nurses who sometimes will go into the homes of your loved ones and they communicate with you as the diaspora and where they tell you, we went to your mom, Michael, she's doing okay. She seems a little bit lonely because all the kids were going on. That's where the value proposition is for the diaspora. And I tell people all the time, not everybody could go home. We don't need Gambian diasporans to go home because the Gambian economy will crash and we will go into poverty. We need Gambian diasporas to participate financially participate. by investing in companies that solve our problems, but also patronizing businesses that are catering to our people because most people in Gambia, their reality is what I've gone through personally from a finance standpoint and from a family standpoint, it's unrealistic for Gambian diasporas to do it. What I do, I could not do what I do if it wasn't for my wife, Adama, if for, mm. from the family that I come with. Luckily, I don't have a mom or dad who depend on me for my survival. Right. So they could afford me the, the luxury of sacrificing at a level that a lot of people in the diaspora, they are their family's breadwinners. They will never be in a position to to date. And my, my wife always counts. I have forfeited almost 700,000 US dollars worth of salary in four years. Which diasporan realistically could do that in half the year I am away from my family? So for people to think diasporans could just jump and go home and sacrifice for a nation that if we're being honest, we'll take you for granted, we'll make it difficult for you, and they may still see what you're doing and still not patronize your business. Hmm. That is the reality of Africa. So we have to be honest with the conversation. But I think our company, majority of our shareholders are Black diasporans. Half of my revenue every single year comes from people in the diaspora. So if it wasn't for the diaspora, Innovarix would have been a good idea that died. And I probably would have been back working for Walgreens and maybe die early from heartache or depression or something because it didn't work out. So that's just the reality. Doc, uh, this is why the time constraint is unfair. Because everything you just laid out, and this is why I wanted to have the conversation this way. This way that's, that, that's, that, so that practically, and mm -hmm. I I will, uh, this is this is my commitment to you. Uh, 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 you have a customer in me in having a 65 year old mother who visited for six months and then we extended it to a year and she's here. I'm going to kick her out soon. She will go back home and as soon as she lands Gambia, 
we will start with. So here, I, we just gave an example of what could have been done in 2004 if Innovarex was in Gambia. For, uh, 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 what can be done for somebody like me with a 65-year-old mother that I want to give everything Innovarex to because I know the value of what you present? So where can somebody like me start when she leaves here maybe end of year or you know March or February uh, March or April and she goes back and now she's in Banjulunding you know who do I contact first where do I start what am I going to do for a 65 year old step one is the capture moment a comprehensive wellness screening and even if you go to igh.gm that is where the customer journey begins if you get a comprehensive wellness screening that is your baseline. It's a way of us establishing a relationship with her, with you at the same time, which is why if you look at our logo for Wellness on Wheels, yes. it's three people. Yes, It's us, it. the payer, and the patient. So the foundation is a comprehensive wellness screening. And sometimes we offer a baseline level for free, which we call our What's Your Number program. So mm -hmm. we go to villages all the time, screen people for diabetes, hypertension, and get their body mass index. That's their mm -hmm. baseline. Mm -hmm. And based on that, our system takes care of it because we have medical concierge that immediately after her comprehensive wellness screening, they are calling you now to let you know, this is what your mom needs. And this is the plan to purchase for her, which is gonna give her, if she needs monthly medications every single month, access to a doctor, the nurses could go into their homes, so the hardest part is just the capture part. Mm -hmm. Start with a comprehensive wellness screening yes. and our system is designed to keep inflammation going. And because of our technology, every single time that she has a clinical encounter, you get a report sent to you. I got an update. Mm -hmm. Update. So you know exactly what's going on with yes. your mom. Yes. Right. So most yes. people, I tell them start there. But our subscription plans, right now, what we're doing in terms of medication, subsidy programs, at-home delivery, is unprecedented in the entire region. Uh, honestly, every single, every corner of Gambia, we're delivering life-saving medications for less than $1 a day. Um, you say region, I talk stuff. about the world as a whole. And you're talking about region, I'm talking about the world as, world as a whole. Uh, 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 because this, the way Innovarix is doing it, it's not, you know, up, I went to a school where, you know, I, I went to a school with, you know, people from about 18, 19 different countries in Africa, Africa, Suffolk University in Dakar. So I mm -hmm. am that connected in talking to people and their challenges, healthcare challenges for parents, for family back home. And it's the same story. We're not alone in that. Uh, uh, but I'll let you finish. So, so starting with that, starting my mom off, you know, uh, uh, what comes after that? After the screen is, is what you know what comes so, after that as far as the services you present? Mm -hmm. This is how the screening goes. We yes. invested in point of care testing technology. Okay. All that means is, Typically, even within 16 minutes at Innovarex, we could tell you her kidney function level, her liver function level, her diabetes, if there's any signs of diabetes. So we get all this information and then she sees a medical doctor yes. who now explains to her, but also mm -hmm. communicates via electronic health records where she is in her status, her health status. Mm -hmm. And now we devise a plan that oftentimes the easiest part is if it's prescriptions that she needs, we could take care of that. Every yeah. single month we'll take medications to her, right? Mm -hmm. Some people in the diaspora like a, a nurse to go in to check their moms every single month. That's a plan that covers that as well too. Right. So we right. tell you what plan works for you and put you on a subscription that now continuous care is managed. And the day that I publish the outcomes that we're getting in terms of mm -hmm. our subscription care plans, mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. medication adherence rate is higher than U.S. average. Mm -hmm. Our hospitalization rates is lower than U.S. average, not even Gambia average, mm -hmm. U.S. average, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the holistic nature of care that we mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. And your loved one now has a doctor, a pharmacist, a medical doctor, a nutritionist, a physiotherapist, all around her well-being, which is mm -hmm. also a healthcare that is not the model in Africa. 
-hmm. Africa, one doctor is making the decision that a pharmacist should make, that making the decision a nutritionist should make, that making a decision that all these allied health providers are doing. And we keep it in one circle, right? So the biggest thing is just allow us to capture your loved ones and we could help you. As the starting point. Yep. Mm. And that's the biggest point. And every tragic story in Africa that you hear from healthcare, especially yeah. from a chronic condition standpoint. Yes, yes. The, the capture moment was too late. Was By too the late. time they captured where they were from a healthcare standpoint, it was already end stage disease, meaning diabetes was close to amputation. They had a stroke, right? right. They had a heart attack. Right. All those things, if you think about it, right? And it accounts for about 40% of the deaths now is NCDs. Yes. The capture moment was just too late because we don't have an infrastructure. Our healthcare infrastructure is not designed for preventative care. We have a, in case of emergency healthcare system. So yes. by the time you need hospital, you go to Edward Francis, they don't have a solution for you. They send you to Dakar. Dakar, yeah. most of the times when they come back, the outcomes are really poor. Just waiting. Um, so it, it's just a tragic situation that the whole continent has. Doc, thanks, thanks for, you've been so generous with your time. Uh, uh, um, um, and uh, here I am asking for more, because there's one more question that I want to ask, because we won't do justice to this whole thing if we yeah. don't touch on that. Because you said it yourself, how young Gambia is, you know? Mm -hmm. So the two practical examples that I gave that hopefully, you know, will help somebody out there, you know, mm -hmm. a, a, from a parent who has already gone, what could, could have been done, to uh, the parent that's living now, her age, and what could be done for her now. Now, that last part that I want to capture is you talked about the youth. You talked about how young Gambia is. When you gave me those stats, my mind is blown. I actually yeah. went into my health records for this question. Uh, in 2012, because uh, uh, here I am in America, I'm getting that pre prevent uh, pre preventative health care kind of. Uh, uh, I'm mm -hmm. able to go every year, go for my physical. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and and now all of a sudden, for somebody who has never done it in Gambia, like I said, I grew up uh, under that healthcare was privileged because my dad was working for uh, WFP. I was going to uh, Dr. Sengor, uh, 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 yeah, uh, by, yeah, Dr. Sengor by the Bakau. Uh, Absolutely, you know, yeah. Before, as a kid, so that was where I was going. I was getting that level of healthcare. But I knew where I was from and how others were not getting it. They were going to the Bangalore Healthcare Center. See what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I knew where I came. But even with that, it was not preventative. I have my malaria. I go there. I'm sick. Yeah, I go there. It's never, case of, yeah. That's it. I, I never knew what a physical is. I yeah. get here 2012. When I went, they saw that uh, my A1C was, I wrote this down. It was 5.8 which mm -hmm. for a normal and they break, broke this down they said for normal is 5.7 to 6.5.7 under 5.7 so 5.8 5.8 they said oh that's pre-diabetic pre-diabetic yep i didn't go until 2012 i don't know what i did in between and i didn't go for my physical because you know invisible me and invincible me just young uh, and dumb right i didn't go for two more years just skipped it I went, yeah. it was 5.6. I'm like, oh, okay, now that is under 5.7. Oh, pre-diabetic, not anymore. Good. Lifestyle continues. 2015. And then 2017, here I am. I skipped another year. Why? Just felt healthy and dumb. 2015, I, uh, 2017, I go back. Back to pre-diabetic, 5.9. A year later, I'm like, ooh, I got to go back again, 5.9. When they saw that, 2019, and they said that's pre-diabetic. Uh, um, uh, doc, what I did right away was change my lifestyle. I changed my lifestyle. I, I remember even from my diet to my exercise to what I put in my body to being conscious of it to to just wellness. You know, like I, I shifted. I went drastic from meditation mm -hmm. to focusing on me to I stopped eating. Last day I ate meat twenty. Uh, uh, December 31st, 2018, you know, wow. went to a, to a Brazilian buffet place and ate, ate meat like it was the last supper. So, uh. <laughs> change my lifestyle, you know, like, you know, I was not, I'm not eating dairy anymore, you know, as a student, and, and I used to, I uh, used to 
do a lot of like you know sour cream ponce because I could not cook. <laughs> so I changed my. I stopped all of that, doc. I said I changed my lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is why I gave that story an example. As soon as I knew that in 2019, I did everything that I could. You know, it, 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 this is this is what in what 2018. This was a year, the year that I got married. Started yeah, a new yeah. family. Started a new family. My youngest boy is now four. Wow. So if I look at my life right now, at my age, I'm like less than a, 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 a dozen years like a, a, to where my dad died. So mm -hmm. that means if I follow those footsteps where I did everything my dad didn't do, you know, like, you know, I have only like a decade to 12 years for somebody who is a, a father to a four-year-old. Yeah. That story, that personal story I gave to say, right now in Gambia, if I have two brothers there, you know, that are, you know, in their 30s, uh, 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 the youngest one is even younger. Mm -hmm. uh, what can be done for the young person mm -hmm. to have that level of care that I have privil been privileged to have? That way I feel confident. I feel good. I made all the life changes. And I, I, and I, I confidently believe that if I be doing all the right things, I will live past my dad's age. And if he has two other sons that are still in Gambia, what does InnovaX have to offer to young people so that they will have this level of care and confidence in, you know, the, in, in living? That's an excellent question. Um, we offer free capture moments. You're, I, I keep talking about capture because what you mentioned from an information standpoint was your capture moment, meaning they gave you information, which was your baseline and then you mm -hmm. can track it. So since 2019, any young person, if you walk into, you know, that's why we called it your our What's Your Number campaign. Yes. Meaning just find out what your essential numbers are as early as possible mm -hmm. and just Because most people, by the time the disease happens that causes early death, you've had it in your system for a very long time. Mm. A 20 year old Gambian right now, and you say, Okay, Inovrix is not even going to charge me to go check my blood pressure, check my blood sugar, check my weight to make sure I'm healthy. Even if you just do that for yourself every six months, mm -hmm. the moment there's a switch that happens, which sometimes is out of your control because it's genetic, right? When I walked into the doctor's office at 28 years old, I was in my physical prime, I had less mm -hmm. than 10 body percent fat, I was the athlete like nobody else yes. i had hypertension can tell by but, looking yeah yeah but the moment they told me i was hypertensive i knew it was in my dna for the longest because it killed my grandmother my mom had it so i being a medical professional i was like okay now i know what to do, what to do. my capture moment happened since 2018 or well, 20 when i was 28 every single day i've been taking a blood pressure medicine without fail because I know what the outcome is if I don't. Blood pressure is mm -hmm. not going away. My job right now as an entrepreneur itself is a risk factor based on the amount of stress that I deal the with. The amount of stress, yeah. But Employees me mm -hmm. being unmedicated, meaning not controlling it, is uh, being on a speed, fast train to kidney failure, a stroke, and I am more than likely going to die in my 50s if I did not start making those changes at 28. Right. And like you mentioned, us men do think we're invincible, yes. especially if physically, even to this yes. day, when I tell people I have high blood pressure, they don't believe it. Yeah. It's young people, even before your first capture moment, you should know what's in your DNA. What did mommy die from? What did daddy die from? What did our grandparents die from? If it was hypertension, diabetes, heart failure genetically you're already at risk so now you need to start seeking healthcare where it's not even cost associated because we've removed costs show up yes. to Innovrex any day we'll check your blood pressure we'll check your blood sugar we'll tell you this is where you are now the first one is for you yes. information yes the second one is on you meaning oh. if we tell you that oh. you're hypertensive at 25, right? Now, we've done our part. It's your part. 
if you stay in denial, mm -hmm. you're not going to see your daughter get married. And that happens in Gambia all the time where 30, men in their 30s and 20s, you tell them, it's not stress. You are hypertensive. You have diabetes. Start your treatment now. They will ignore it until the ticking time bomb explodes. And then, you know, ah, I just That's saw Michael head. yesterday. What yes. happened? I didn't he died from something that has been killing him for 20 years. It's not voodoo. It's not black magic. It's not luck. He died from a chronic condition that was unmanaged, that started 20 years ago, that he knew the information, but ignored it. And he died before he made his will. He died before he had inheritance plan in place. He died before he had a financial wealth transfer system. So it affects the entire generation. So what you did for yourself, you were doing it for your four-year-old son to have a chance of having conversations with you when he also has a son or a daughter. That's mm. what you're doing for. But it's information because the moment you let go, diabetes is around the corner. Right? Right? It, it's just what it is, Michael. It, it, it Healthcare is not that complicated. It's how early could you get information and what do you do after you're presented with that information? That, that's, that's the game. Now, you could get hit by lightning or in yes. Gambia, you can have a yes. motor vehicle accident, yes. which people yes. die all the time. Yes. Yes. But the things you can control most of the times are deaths. They're not preventable, yes. but they could be delayed. 100%. And that's the game you're playing. 100%. Just delayed as long as possible, yes. right? But, yeah, yes. but the death is in inevitable. Yes. Doc, um, um, I knew this. I knew this was going to be the case. Uh, and thanks for your time. Uh, of course. But, 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 but this message is important for, to get yeah. to the people. You, you said healthcare, the way you just presented healthcare and how you simplified it for the masses. You've avoided all those words that I can't spell. And that, like, you know, you've avoided everything, you know, doctor language. And that was intentional from my end too, because I just wanted to make it as practical as I just did. And I laid out these examples, but you offer more than these three examples that I, 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 I've, I've asked about. If anybody is in the diaspora, whether you're mm. in the Gambia, where Innovarix is, and uh, wherever else you're spreading, because I, I did see that you, you're looking at. Uh, uh, tell me where else you got, you guys are or are going to be going, you know, in yeah. the near future. Uh, yeah, wait, so tell me yeah. about that first. <laughs> it's it's never been a Gambia project. It's been an Africa yes. project. And yes. honestly, Michael, I identify more as being West African than I do Gambian. Yes. I know yes. it, it 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 is just what it is, right? One hundred percent. Yeah. So in Ni Nigeria, we ran a pilot. Nigeria. Everything yeah. I said about Gambian youth, yes. uh -huh. when I went to Nigeria, I had a different experience. The yes. hunger for yes. knowledge and oh. competence, right? So yes. so Nigeria, we've already run a pilot. We're getting ready to scale there. We have Good. conversations Good. in some East African countries that we're looking at. But everything I described to you, even yeah. any African country is ready for Innovarex. And yes. we have the ability, and it'll be easier in some of those countries because talent and then their regulatory affairs are more in, inviting and conducive for innovation, Beautiful. Beautiful. right? So as yeah. difficult as Gambia has been the yes. past four yeah. years, we're excited about the Africa expansion for sure. That's gonna happen. It, 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 just from that point, I'm glad you started in Gambia then. You know, if 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 every, every other place you go to Africa will be slightly easier, I'm glad you started at home. And the reason Nothing why I... I <laughs> <laughs> Nothing could be harder than Gambia. That's, Gambia that is, is, <laughs> that Gambia is good is, news. It's, it's an ex extreme sport, which is why a lot of people just, <laughs> it's so difficult that some people just give up on Gambia because our country is broken in a very yeah. unusual way. They come with oh, <laughs> I have too many examples of that. That's why you know, we won't have time for all of that. As people yeah. are listening, this is why I give you the chance to say, you know, whether it's where Innovarix is already or is going to, everybody will benefit from this hearing about how you just presented healthcare. So if you're in the mm -hmm. diaspora and you're you're from you're, you're from Zimbabwe, you're from South Africa, you're from Ethiopia, you're from Sudan, if you're in if you're if you're in the diaspora, find an equivalent or close to or something that does service like that 
where you know you will attack healthcare at, 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 at not the stage the last stage of the hospital hospital bed but starting mm. it early. any i mean it's easy if you live in the us and the uk it's easy mm. for you to say this level of healthcare that i'm getting you know even though mm. the us has a lot of work to do uh, at this level of healthcare that i'm having i can also try and have for my parents or my my siblings or even pass on the information doc um i have to beg you to come again because I, i have a thousand things that i've not touched on you know yeah, always to present things this way thank you so much for your time and oh, thank I you wait for us to continue this conversation absolutely no i'm grateful for you part of what we do it, it'll be very difficult if people didn't amplify what we're doing uh because the journey hasn't been easy i haven't been able to do it alone mm-hmm. but over the years like-minded people like you that were connected in terms of our spirit and what we want for the continent have mm-hmm. helped me amplify our stories because as you know gambia is an afterthought when it comes to anything africa from right. investments from business right. ideas people just don't think about us 100%. Right. Um so I, I'm really grateful to have had the conversation the first of many that me and you will have even not right. without health care. Yes. But I'm excited about your platform. I think what you're doing is so important for us to connect the narrative. Yes. And I think what excites me most is understanding your family dynamic because now you guys are an African household. Yes. And I really do believe that Africa could benefit with East and West combining together yes. north south yes. that's what the africa of the future will look like um so for your kids you're raising high fans that are going to be yes. very rich yeah. uh but i'm really really grateful uh, and humbled by the opportunity to speak to you today the oh, this, is, this is my pleasure the honor is all like uh, doc you have no idea i told you i'm a fan boy uh, i'll stop here until i bring you again so that all the other like you know layers of the onion that i want to just unravel we will get there but thank you for this time that you've given me as a first of many of course i appreciate it thank you so much <laughs>